Today we're going to see some IoT for beginners. We're going to create a remote LED control using the Arduino Nano 33 IoT board with Arduino Cloud. And the goal here is to provide a practical introduction to IoT projects using Arduino Cloud and to demonstrate how everyday objects can be controlled remotely while using internet connected devices. Now, there's a number of reasons I really like the Arduino Cloud. It's easy to integrate your Arduino hardware and third party hardware for that matter. It also has a user friendly interface that doesn't really take long to learn how to use. I also like the scalability. You can go from one thing in your project to over time many things in your project and it's all very easy to keep organized. And it also provides secure communication between devices and the cloud which is probably the most important thing for all IoT applications. For this video I'm just simply going to start off with the Arduino Nano 33 IoT board, a breadboard, a 220 ohm resistor, a 5 millimeter LED, just one male to male jumper wire, a 9 volt battery, and a 9 volt battery snap connector. I'll go ahead and plug in the Nano here and then I'll share with you my computer screen so that you can see what I'm talking about as we go along the way. As you can see I'm at the Arduino.cc website and I'll just go over here and click on the cloud and it'll bring me to the home tab of Arduino Cloud and from here you can see uh, the devices that are online or offline, your list of things. I have zero out of ten things and here you can see recent files all of which I have deleted. These are just ones that I've played around with previously as I was just getting familiar. Over here on the left side you can navigate to the different tabs and different areas of Arduino IoT and that's what we'll do. We'll start off with uh, getting our device set up by clicking on add device and at this point you need to have the Arduino create agent running in the background. If you don't have the create agent you can get it by going to support.arduino.cc then type agent into the search bar and click on the first link that says install Arduino create agent. Now that we have create agent running in the background we can click on Arduino. If this is your first time downloading you may be prompted to download a file. In that file you'll get an ID for your board as well as a secret key. Now copy that and put it into a folder somewhere on your computer so you can refer to that at a later time. Now it's found my board and the next step is to configure it and I'll just cycle through here and just pick a random name that it selects for me and we'll name the board Emmy. I think that's how you say it. Making the device IoT ready is the last step in the device setup and once it is finished we can hit done and once it's done you'll see the name of your device in the top left corner as well as some other information about your device and below that if you need to you can update your firmware and the next step for us is to click on our thing down here and just add our first thing at this point we'll click on associated device and as you can see it's got the board that we set up so we'll go ahead and click associate and now you can see some information about that board up here so everything looks good we'll come down here and click on network and now we link our network by including the password and login and that looks good. So we'll go up here and add our first cloud variable and for the first variable we'll name it LED and for the next part we're going to name the variable type or select the variable type and it's a boolean variable which means that it can hold one of two possible values either true or false. It's be off or on and it's going to be read only and we click add variable. We're going to add another variable for our switch and we'll call this one switch and we'll go down It'll be a boolean variable as well. And the switch variable will be a read and write variable. Now the read variables you can view from the Arduino cloud but you can't change them. And write variables are those whose values can be changed or set through the Arduino cloud. This allows you to send commands from the cloud to the IoT device. The next thing we're going to do is create our dashboard. Now the dashboard allows us to manage our devices and also to monitor and control the IoT components that we have through the use of interactive widgets that show real time data. So for the switch we're going to create a widget that is a switch and we're going to name it LED switch. Now we're going to link it to a variable and as you can see we can't link it to the LED because the LED is just a read variable whereas the switch is a read write variable. So after we select our thing and our variable we we'll click link variable. Now the switch widget is on our dashboard so we'll add another widget here and this will be the LED widget and we'll go over here and just leave it named LED. Now we're going to click on link variable. We're going to link our LED to the LED variable and then click link variable and then we're done. Now we have two widgets on our dashboard. We can also name our dashboard. We can name it something like LED switch 
not too complicated, just so you're not confused if you have multiple dashboards. And click on rename. And to the left there are edit and view buttons. If you need to edit your widgets for any reason, you click on the edit button. There's also a view and you can view it in two modes, monitor mode and cell phone mode. And you can shift your widgets around and then expand them, make them bigger, smaller. Now we're going to click on done and then click this little tab up here to bring the drop down menu. We're going to go back to things and uh, we're going to rename things the LED switch just so that it matches our dashboard. Now there's two different places you can upload sketches. You can see that one is here in the things section. There's a tab up at the top right that says sketches. Anytime you uh, do an update you'll see a number on there and you hover over that and it'll tell you what the update is. I like this for device specific configurations, integrated cloud features and over the air updates. So I always update my sketch here before I go to the sketches tab in the drop down menu. Now after you update your sketch you can click on the sketches tab in the drop down menu and you should see that your device is online. It's green as opposed to gray. Now click on your sketch named LED switch and it takes us to another location where you can upload your sketch and it has these tabs at the top, the things, properties, dot H, secrets, and readme tabs and these provide a structured and secure approach to developing, configuring, and documenting your IoT projects. This is where I like to play around with the code and look at the uh, serial monitor to see how it's reacting, debugging, I like to do all that in this screen right here. So when you click on sketches and you see this, just know that it's a general template to help with your starting point and it'll also help incorporate basic structures and facilitate integration with the uh, Arduino cloud services. And what we're going to do is just use this template and add some basic code to it so that we can flip a switch and turn an LED on and off from a remote location and we'll do that using Arduino IoT remote app on the cell phone. You can see that we added some basic code to our template for some LED switch functionality. You can see at the top that we include thing properties.h and Arduino secrets and these are important header files for Arduino IoT cloud and your network login and password. We also define the LED at Arduino pin 10. In the setup this function runs once when the Arduino is powered on and reset. It initializes serial communication, sets LED pin as an output, initializes Arduino IoT cloud properties, establishes connection with the cloud, and it'll also print debug information to the serial monitor. In the loop, this function continuously executes the main code and also ensures the cloud is regularly updated. The on switch change function is called whenever there's a change in the switch state. It controls the LED based on the switch variable, which is declared in the things properties tab up at the top. It updates the LED variable to reflect the LED's physical state, whether it's on or off. Well, we've clicked upload and it still says busy. We're just waiting for the serial monitor to tell us that our board is connected. If you get this message in your serial monitor, it says handle connect MQTT broker could not connect. Just go ahead and start over with the setup of your IoT board. I've read through all the forums. Other people have issues and there's no real answer to how to fix it. I only had this problem once, but if there's a better way to fix it, let me know in the comments below. So back to the sketch, everything looks good, everything uploaded properly, so we're going to go to the dashboard at this point. Click the cloud up here in the top right, and that'll bring the drop down menu. But actually, before I go to the dashboard, I should probably put my little circuit together here. All I'm doing is connecting the positive pin of the LED to pin 10, and connect the negative pin of the LED to ground using a 220 ohm resistor. Now that I have my circuit set up on my breadboard, I can go ahead and click on dashboard here on the left. And in the dashboard, you should be able to click on the switch widget and turn the light on. And then you see the LED widget light up and then you turn the switch off and it should go off. It should correspond to what you're holding in your hand. So now that we got that, it's time to take it apart, make it wireless and see if we can do it through the app. Okay, you're gonna need to download the Arduino IoT remote app. I downloaded it from the Arduino Play Store. I assume that if you're using an iPhone, you can download it from their store as well. You just log in with Arduino Cloud login. Next, tap on the dashboard icon at the bottom of your screen and you should see the dashboard pop up there. If not, you can tap on devices and you should see your device here and with the name of your device and it should be lit up green. 
If it is green and you're connected, go ahead and tap on dashboard and you should be able to operate your LED from your phone, from the app. And you should be able to switch it on and switch it off. Just like that. Now to make it totally wireless, we'll go ahead and connect our 9 volt battery before we unplug the USB. We're going to plug in the, the positive lead of our 9 volt to the VIN pin and then the negative to the ground. Just like you see here. If you remove the USB from your board before you attach the battery, your board will lose power and you'll lose the sketch. The only way I know to get the sketch back is to re-upload from your computer. If you've made it this far, your board should be totally battery operated and you should be able to turn the LED on and off remotely using your app on your cell phone. Now that we have a basic understanding of Arduino Cloud, we can take this and build on it and create some practical projects in future videos that I hope you check out.